What's up divas and what's up divas it's your girl april and you already know what time it is it's wednesday real talk wednesday so yes i am rather happy i don't really know why but i'm all smiles today i'm usually all smiles unless somebody kind of steps on my toes then yeah i'm not so happy about that so i made me a drink of course this is a little bit different this is mango juice and rum yeah Arizona mango juice. You know, like Arizona tea. The Ari Not because I'm here in Arizona, but you guys get it. So that's what this is today. And no, I'm not tipsy. Oh, that's not why I'm smiling. This is the first drink that I had all day. Anyway, um, so yeah. So I just went shopping today. And I should probably do a video. Because Forever 21 has clearance. 30% off clearance and buy one get one free. So for all of this, I spent 50 bucks. That's probably why I'm so happy because I like a good bargain. Yes. Had my Forever 21 shirt dress on too when I was there. Yeah. So anyway, the hair is still the same hair. Best lace wigs, kinky stray hair. It is holding up. However, I do notice when you wear it so much, because I haven't washed it yet. So I've been wearing it since the day that I made it, which was the day that I posted the video, which was a while ago, like two, three weeks ago. Um, it gets a little bit more thicker and thicker, more kinkier and more kinkier. But it's still good. Um, it does tangle. It does tangle. It tangles at the nape. That's the only place where it tangles is at the nape, inner inner nape, and that's it. And that that's like all my wigs do that, and I hate that, but all my wigs do that. And anyway, you guys, if you've seen, I did show you my new tattoo last week. Um, so it's not fully healed. Um, let me tell you guys about this, okay? First of all, it's not fully healed. Um, it's a fish, and it's not fully done, but. Do you see like that big scab and then another one right here? So it is not fully healed because when I'm bending my arm right here, you know, your skin tightens and stretches. Well, it keep it's, let me tell you, it did not heal too good in certain spots. So I had to pour like a bottle of peroxide on it and it started fizzing. You can hear it cooking and everything, um, pussing. This happened to me before for another tattoo um, because of the where my skin is at and it's so sore right here where the scab is at. So it's like, oh, God, I just want it to be over with. I don't even want to go back and get it done because I'm just, I just want it to be over with. I'm just so over it right about now. Like seriously over it right about now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say if my love, Miss Andy... Um, from the Empress of Shade is watching. She sent me a Christmas card. And we have been friends for so many years. This is my love muffin right here. We have been friends for so many years. Thank you. Um, thankfully to you too. So, yes, she sent me a Christmas present. And she looks just gorgeous, darling. Gorgeous. So, yes. Um, but we have been friends for quite some time. So, I thank you, my love, if you are watching this video. I was so in good spirits when I got it. Like, when I seen the picture on it, I was smiling like, wow, I'm so happy for you. So, yes. So, let's get on to this real talk. If you guys want a real talk about your situation, then you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line of real talk. And also, if you want to change the name of yourself or your characters in the email, you can go ahead and do so and just let me know that in the beginning of the email. But other than that, we can get on to it. There's really nothing new that I want to talk about, just that I went shopping and got some things. Um... It was Christmas shopping, but I got myself something. Yeah. Took my grandson for his first Christmas. He got a picture with Santa, Santa Man. And I was told by Santa that I've been on the naughty list for too long and that I ain't getting nothing. However, he might come give me something kind of special. My daughter was like, oh, that kind of sounds perverted. Was Santa Man trying to pick up me, pick me, pick me up, hit on me? What the hell? Oh, okay. Mm. So let's get on to this real talk. And yeah. Get on to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so like I always tell you guys, I'm going to try to do three. I really, really am going to try to do three. So let us let me stop running my mouth, okay? Dear Miss Muffins, greetings to you. For the sake of this situation, please call me Trisha. So, so it was in 2005 when I was supposed to go to college, but my family was so poor, we could only afford to send one person to college at a time. So my parents decided to send my brother since he was more intelligent and already had offers. I found out there was a cheap college very far away from home, so I went on and moved there with hopes that I would be able to discover myself and find a way to get into the school. Things were very tough and I got word that my dad's former boss was very influential in the school and could get me in with a written recommendation. I went to his office and begged him to write me a recommendation letter, but he was only going to do that in exchange for sex. Mind you, I was 20 years old and he was 60 at this point. I was so distraught and it took me months and months of trying over avenues and repeatedly failing before I decided I just had to sleep with him. Well, I got into the school and got side jobs working at an establishment that was willing to hire me, but I still was unable to make ends meet as things got worse and worse back home. My mom became very ill. My dad just couldn't make enough money. I found myself sleeping with this man for money, just, to, just so that I could pay my mom's medical bills. This went on for about a year, and we could see, and we would see each other twice every month. Then his family came to visit from Europe, and I got to meet his daughter. Let's call her Jane. We became friends. The guilt began to set in, so I withdrew from the whole thing and dropped out of school so that I could get a full-time job to take care of my family. It's been 10 years, and I'm almost 30 years old, and currently in a loving relationship and have a good job, and I just finished my first semester of my freshman year. And my mom is doing much better in health, and dad's business is beginning to grow. I thought I left the past behind, but just this morning I got a Facebook message from Jane asking if I had an affair with her dad. Of course I denied it, and I told her to go ask her father. Then she replied saying that her dad was the person that told her, and then proceeded to call me all, and then she proceeded to call me all, all sorts of names and even threatened to humiliate, humiliate me in public on social media and whenever we cross paths in the future. Her dad has been retired for over five years and lives in Europe. I have had no contact with him even though he tried to communicate a few times. Muffin, I am ashamed and don't know what to do. With this, will this guilt kill me? I feel terrible. Please help. So, let's see here. So, Trisha is now 30. Uh, 2005, what was that? 10 years ago, she was 20 years old. She was trying to go to school. Um, her family was poor, so they weren't able to get her into a good school. She found a cheaper school that was far from home and found out that her father's boss, former boss, was a big influential person to the school. And she went and begged him to write a letter of recommendation. However, he wouldn't write the letter of recommendation unless he gave her some unless she gave him some pussy. Um, despite that, she tried to find all other avenues to get into the school and nothing worked out. So in the end, she actually had to give up the cookie. Now, while she was away in school, her mother got sick, her bills were piling up, her father's business wasn't taking a big turn, so they were, it was hard to make ends meet. So she quit school, went to work full time, and also was able to help her family out. But in the meantime, while she was um, going to school, before she even quit, Trisha was sleeping with this guy who is part of the school to um, help pay bills for her mom's medical bills. She's met his daughter, she's met his family members, and now she feels guilty. And his daughter, um, Sugar Daddy, we're going to call him Sugar Daddy, Sugar Daddy's daughter, um, you know, befriended her. They became friends. But Trisha kind of pulled back because of the guilt she had. Now, Sugar Daddy's daughter is wondering when and where and why didn't you tell me you slept with my father, you had an affair with my father. And she is going to embarrass her. Um, Trisha on all social media and when they come across each other's path. Now here's my thing. Is the guilt going to kill her? It's only going to kill you if you allow it to. Here's the thing. You ain't the one that had the affair. Her father is the one that had the affair, okay? You just was fucking him. He probably had a wife at home that you were unaware of, or you probably were aware of it. You probably knew. However, she's going to embarrass you. Let me tell you something. What can she possibly say that you slept with an older man? You're not the first one to fucking sleep with an older man, Trisha. 
Trust and believe. I'm not saying I slept with some old ass man because I that ain't my style. That ain't my stilo. Don't do it. However, you ain't the first one to sleep with somebody. And you damn sure ain't the first one to sleep with somebody for some fucking money. I mean, please. I'm not saying I did either, but I'm just saying you ain't the first one. Shit got to get paid. Shit got to get done. I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all bitches think that y'all got a boyfriend or whatever. He don't live with y'all and he still live with y'all. Y'all live together. Y'all sleep with him. He buy y'all shit. You sleeping with the nigga and get, you give him a pussy for money. You give him a pussy for gifts. Y'all just don't fail to realize that y'all in a relationship. But it's the same concept. She just wasn't in a committed relationship. However, she was in somewhat of a fucking pretty woman relationship where he paid her shit off and that was that. It was no strings attached. Sometimes that shit could be the best fucking relationship there is. Get what the fuck you need and get out, okay? I'm not condoning it, but I'm not about to judge her neither because, like I said, shit got to be done. And she did it for all sorts of reasons, which were her own good enough reasons, and that's good enough for me. I don't judge people because people, you never know what the fuck you're going to have to do tomorrow to survive and to make it into this world. So I don't judge nobody. However, bitches ain't realize that some bitches sleep with niggas just for a purse and a pair of shoes. When Trisha was sleeping with a fucking old ass nigga for schooling so she can get an education and be somebody and so her mama could get better and her family could be taken care of so if you had to juggle the two you gonna sleep with a nigga for a purse or you gonna sleep with a nigga for what i just said about trisha i think i'm gonna go with trisha's side because even though it's fucked up at least it's not so fucked up you know what i'm saying however his daughter sugar daddy's daughter she want to talk shit now you want to embarrass me on social media and you want to talk shit when you see me let's just get it like this she's not gonna be embarrassing nobody trisha but her father because who she gonna say oh yeah my so-called friend slept with my father first of all boo boo i wasn't your friend your father introduced us and that's how we became friends however your father is the one who was fucking with me he was the one chasing after all of this. So if anybody is going to be embarrassed, Trisha, it's going to be her father. So you may, you may want to talk to her about that and let her know. If you want to go ahead and write on social media that I fucked your father, then you go right ahead. Because the only person that's going to get disrespected and look stupid on social media is your father. Because he fucked me around on your mother. So anybody who's going to feel stupid and look stupid... And embarrassed is going to be herself and her father and her mother and any other siblings that may be involved in their life. So if she wants to write that shit, let her fucking write it. However, let her know beforehand that the only motherfucking person you're going to be embarrassing is your goddamn self, your mother, your father, and your siblings. Because just remember, sweetheart, your father fucked me. He was the one who was chasing after this with his old ass, okay? So write what you want, but I got everything that I got out of him. And put a smiley face at the end of that. Sometimes you got to serve the bitch a dish of her own fucking... Um, shit because sometimes bitches come at you and they feel like they're gonna say some fucking words of encouragement meaning the encouragement is they get the encouragement on the other side of the computer to try to scare your ass however i don't really give a fuck about how you feel what you feel yeah i fucked your father so fucking what and bitch i'm probably not the only one okay so let's just get that let's just set that out there okay just make sure you let her know with a smiley face that the only person she's going to be embarrassing is herself and her father and her mother. Because what's she going to say? <sighs> Trisha, you fucked an old man? So what? Big fucking deal. Young girls go for old men these days. Or Trisha, you fucked my father? Okay, now you look fucking stupid. So if you want to go ahead, let her go ahead. But... Hold on. If that bitch want to come to you in public, face to face, and try to disrespect, well, the good angel on this side of me is going to say, walk away and be nice and ignore that bitch because she's really not worth your time and your fucking effort to beating her ass and going to jail. Because some bitches are worth the ass whipping and getting in trouble with. But some bitches like her because she's a silly bitch. She's a silly bitch. She's really not worth your time. So what I would do. I wouldn't put hands on her. Because you don't want to get in trouble for putting hands on anybody. Um, 
it's really not worth it. Take it from me. I've been arrested enough times for putting hands on bitches and putting hands on motherfucking Negroes too. Okay, so I have enough fucking assault charges on my record. So some things you don't want to take from me so lightly. However, I'm going to tell you like this. Um, I'm 41 years old. I don't try to go out there fighting bitches no more because I'm just too old for that. And not only that, I'm just too mature. And I'm not about to be out here embarrassing myself. However, I'm going to give you some words of wisdom. Meaning, bitch, if you keep running off at the mouth, I'm going to fucking spit some shit out of my mouth. Not spit and saliva. But I'm going to spit some real shit to you that's going to have you, your mother, your father, your sister, your brothers, and the whole motherfucking clan feeling some type of way in your feelings because I'm going to hurt your shit. Hurt your feelings that bad, but with the shit that's going to come out of my motherfucking mouth, okay? And then that's that, all right? I don't have to say too much. However, some bitches, you have to put hands on them. You have to lay hands on them because they just they just don't never know when to shut the fuck up. However, for this little bitch right here, she don't seem like the type that you're going to have to put hands on because she's a dumb silly. She's a silly bitch where she feel like going to social media is going to embarrass you. But she's so fucking stupid that she doesn't realize the only person that she's going to embarrass is her own self and her own father. So she wants to write that, let her write that. However, if you see her in plain sight, in plain view, and she's talking some shit, then you need to let her know. Sweetheart, you need to grow up. Because yes, I fucked your father. I fucked your father with his old ass and got what the fuck I needed. Now, if you want to write that on social media, you can. However, I would suggest you watch what the fuck you say and make sure you don't put your hands on me. Because if you do, there's going to be a fucking problem. And I'm not going to put it on social media. And that's that. You ain't got to scream. You ain't got to fucking yell. You ain't got to raise your voice. A lot of shit that I say to people when I'm... when I'm, Because just trust and believe a bitch like me do. I get it popping. I see bitches in public. And it don't matter what the fuck or who the fuck you are, your age, it don't matter. If you disrespect, I'm going to let you have it. And then I'm going to let you know you need to watch what you're talking about too. Because you really don't fucking know me like that. So some bitches, you got to let them know. And I don't have to go and scream at the top of my lungs neither. All of that's... All that screaming is really not necessary to get your point across. You just let a bitch know straight up. Yes, I fucked your father. That's right, I did. And let me tell you, I fucked him because he wanted me to fuck him. And also, I got what I needed out of him. So therefore, if you want to put it on social media, you are more than welcome. But remember, the only person that you're going to be embarrassing is yourself and your father. And possibly your mother if I was fucking him while they were married. So continue on with your day and get the fuck out of my face. That's how you handle bitches like that. Because all you're going to do is leave her stand there like. And she's probably going to be like, you fucking bitch. You fucking bitch. Yeah, but that's what your dad was saying when I stopped fucking him too. Okay. Bye-bye. So yeah, Trisha. Don't let the fucking secret kill you. Don't let the guilt. First of all, don't even feel guilty. I don't even know what you're feeling guilty for. Don't even feel guilty. You fuck them, you fuck them. So what? Like I said, bitches fuck niggas all the time. They fucking for dumb shit. They're fucking for a pack of sweet tarts, okay? There's some lame ass bitches out there that will fuck your man for a pack of sweet tarts. Best and believe. That's the ones that should feel fucking guilt and fucking embarrassed. Not for no shit that you tried to get yourself into a school for an education for a better life and you paid your family's medical bills and bills in general. Please, I wouldn't feel embarrassed about that. Don't let that shit get you down. And don't let that little trifling ass bitch of his daughter get you down neither. Do as I said. And if she want to post it on social media, that's her business. Because you know what? Like I said, in the long run, the only person that's going to be embarrassed is herself and her family. And if you see her visually and she want to say some shit, let her know. That's right. I fucked your dad. Yeah. And probably because your mother wasn't laying it down right. But I got all I needed from him. And that's why I finished fucking him. So now your mama can have back if you was to say some shit like that to me i don't really know where i would do i don't really know what i would say you would probably have me sitting there like what the fuck did you just say bitch right and that's the same thing your dad said to me when i said i'm not fucking him anymore what the fuck did you just say bitch bye bye boo bye felicia bye Mhm. Mm i'm just saying i'm just saying don't let no little fucking bitches ruin your day 
I never let a female, and I'm sorry, I'm calling them bitches, but I never let one fuck up my day. And you ain't about to fucking embarrass me no goddamn way. I don't really give a shit who the fuck you are. You're, you're not embarrassing me. Mm -mm. Okay, so here we go with another one. Oh, let Trisha know what you would do in a situation. Okay, hi, Abel. Just call me Monique for the sake of the video. Before I begin, I want to tell you I have been watching you since I was in the sixth grade, and I am 22 years old now. I have looked up to you for so long, and you are truly an inspiration. Here it goes. I met my husband through family members three years ago. We have been married for almost two years. Although I was four months pregnant when we got married, I did it because I love him and I looked at my peers and realized how little they value relationships. A few months into our marriage, I started noticing how super jealous he was. For example, I had a male friend that was like a brother to me and I was talking to him on the phone while my husband was at work. So when he got home, I mentioned that I talked to him on the phone at the time. He didn't say anything. We went about our night. So the next day, he went through my phone and looked at how long we were on the phone and flipped out. So we got into an argument and I mentioned to him that this man has never attempted to talk to me. He has he, he was nothing but a good friend to me. He doesn't believe me, so things get physical and mind you, I am pregnant with his son. After that, he apologized and admitted he made a mistake and he was sorry. Nevertheless, nevertheless he didn't want me talking to him anymore. I hated that I had to lose a lifelong friend simply because my husband was insecure. Since then, any time we argue, it always ends up physical. Knowing this, I asked my mother, would it be okay if I moved back in with her to get away from him? She said, no, I can't do anything but respect it because she doesn't want any foolishness at her house. We have talked about divorce on many occasions, and he knows I don't want to be with him anymore. But since we still live together, I don't think he takes the divorce seriously. Not to mention, any time I, uh, I used to refuse to have sex with him, he would rip off my panties and have sex with me anyway. So now I didn't even fight. So now I don't even fight him. I just lay still. He is not a bad person. I just don't want to put myself through this anymore. I have lost weight. My mother constantly reminds me how sick I look every time I see her. He hates for me to wear makeup so I don't doll up anymore. I don't dress up. I don't go out. I want to leave but I have nowhere to go and no money. I want a better life for my son because no child deserves to see his father abuse their mother. He deserves so much better and I feel like being with his father I will never be able to provide for him. How I want to. Any advice you will have will be much appreciated. By the way, my husband is 27 years old. Wow. Now this is like, uh, wow. So Monique is 22. Her husband is 27. They've been known each other for three years. She met him three years. They've been married two. Um, he's very insecure. She's lost her lifelong friend who was a male to her husband because he didn't want her talking to him anymore. And he's physical. Every time they have an argument, he gets physical with her. She's asked her mom if she could come back home. She says no. He doesn't like her wearing makeup. She doesn't go out. She doesn't want to have sex with him. And when she doesn't want to have sex with him, he wouldn't, he wouldn't rip her panties off. But now she doesn't do anything but just lay still. And he's not taking this divorce seriously because they still live together. So she has nowhere to go and no money. Oh, wow. Here's the thing, Monique. First of all, what he's doing is called domestic violence. And he's a control freak. He's very um, just controlling over you. And it's sad to say that your mother is not going to let you come back home because she doesn't want any foolishness. But she knows how sick you look because you've lost weight and you're pregnant, but she doesn't want to help you. And that's unfortunate because right about now you're very vulnerable and you're stressed out. And you really don't want your baby to come out um, or have your baby too early because of your stress level. But, I mean, I can kind of relate to the shit you're going to, through, but not so much. However, I will tell you this. Um, if you are in your hometown, it doesn't really matter where you're at. Every state, as far as I know, every state has what they call the YWCA. The same thing, YMCA, but the YWCA. If you don't have a YWCA in your area, then I would suggest calling the YMCA. However, I would also, also suggest calling social services 
or looking up children and family services. Let them know your situation. Either one. The YWCA has a shelter for domestic violence women. And they will help you. They will bring you into their shelter. And they will help you. They will get you into a new home. New housing. New home furniture. Things for you and your baby. Food stamps. Everything that you need to get yourself back onto your feet. and Into your own. They will help you with. Because this is a domestic violence situation. Um, you do. You will need to go live in their shelter. And it's not a shelter where you're thinking that it's in a big open area and there's cots all over the place. This is not like that. These type of shelters are very private. They're normally in a home setting. And they're, they're kept very private. So you would never know that these were shelters. However, they're very secure. And like I said, they help you with a lot of things. And I really think that this is beneficial to you right now. Even so, if there's no YMCA in your, your hometown... What I would do if I were you, I would look up children and family services because they are like CPS, you know, child protection services. They can help you and they can help you as in giving you guidance of where you can call. Or you can also call your local police department and they can also give you guidance. But, however, you're in a very unhealthy, unstable situation. And what you said to me is he's not a bad guy, but you just don't want to be with him. Um, okay, I'm about to fix my mouth to say this, but don't take offense with it. Bitch, are you fucking crazy? He's a good guy. I'm sorry, but if I don't want to have sex with you, you ain't about to rip my panties off and take no shit from me. Because in the real world, we call that a form of rape. Okay, if you don't want to fuck... And the nigga take your panties off anyway and rips them off of you. But you don't want to fuck. That's called rape. He unwillingly. You were very unwilling. But he took the shit. That's called rape. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're married to the person. If you tell them no and you don't want to give it up. And he rips your panties and takes it. That's called rape. It doesn't matter. Married or non-married. Yes. It's called rape. Okay. And I know I keep saying it. Because that's what the fuck is called rape. So... I'm not really sure. Do nice guys go around raping people these days and physically harming a pregnant woman? So, um, Monique, stop fucking taking up for him because you're blindsided right about now. You're fucking blindsided when you say that he's not a bad guy, but you just don't want to be with him. So, he's all, he's so good, he's good to go, but you just don't want to fucking be with him, okay? He's he's perfect for somebody else, but you just don't want to fuck with him. You pregnant by him, but you just don't want to be with him because he's so fucking good guy. He's such a nice guy that you just don't want to fucking be with him. No, he's a fucking asshole, okay? And you know it. Your mama knows it, and everybody else knows it. He's a fucking asshole. If he can go around and put his hands on you, especially while you're pregnant, he's a fucking asshole who needs to get his fucking balls kicked the fuck into the back of his goddamn neck. Okay? He's a fucking asshole. Somebody needs to kick him so hard in his fucking private area to where you won't see that shit no more. Then you can't appropriate. You can't have no more kids. You won't be pulling nobody's panties off, motherfucker. Okay? Somebody need to pull your panties off and give it to you where the sun don't shine. Maybe you'll see how you like it or how she don't like it. And you'll stop fucking going around raping motherfuckers that you're married to. So what that's called is a form of rape. Whether you want to think it is or not, it's called rape. Okay, yes, it's called rape. And your mom, she don't want to help you, that's fine. Sometimes you don't need family members to help you. Sometimes you don't need to go living back at family members' houses neither. Because for the simple fact, he's a fucking asshole. And he seems like the type of person that's going to come knock on somebody's fucking door and be like, where's my fucking wife? You need to bring your ass home. So with people like him, you need to go to an environment that's more secure and safe. So what should you do? What you should do is, like I said, you either contact the YMCA or YWCA and ask them about their domestic violence shelter for women and children, or you can contact Children and Family Services in your state or the Department of Social Services who can help you, or the police. You don't have to call the police on his fucking dumb ass, but what you can do is call and inquire. Or better yet, better yet... Now, I'm not saying go around calling the popo on motherfuckers. However, some of these motherfuckers need to get the popo calls on them because they don't know how to fucking act. And it's sad and unfortunate and a shame that grown ass men would want to go around hitting on women, but not only just a woman hitting on a pregnant woman that's carrying your child. These are the motherfuckers that 
must want to go to jail. They the ones who be like, hey, officer, yes, me, Frederick, I'm ready to go to jail right now. Just take me down. These are the motherfuckers that are saying I want to go to jail because they doing shit like that. So if it were me, because what you can get, um, Monique, what you can you can get your you can get a charge against you too, and you fail to realize this, but you can be what they call t you can get charged as child endangerment, even though your baby is not born. Child child endangerment because you are putting yourself and your child at risk in a hostile and violent environment. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what it's called, child endangerment. So even though you're getting your ass fucking kicked and shit, it's called child endangerment because you and the child are in a situation and you are not doing anything about it but staying there. So that's when they call it child endangerment. So you just may want to think about that and think about things and think about how fucking nice he is. You might want to think about how nice he is and, and think about your shit and your kid's shit. Because he seems like a great guy. Yes. Oh, my God. He seems so great. Ripping off your panties, hitting you while you're pregnant, putting you in your unborn in jeopardy. He seems like the kind of guy that I would just love to fucking date. All right. yes I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that but what I'm gonna tell you is things that I've offered and stated to you and advise you to do I would kindly do them and leave him the fuck alone they will even help you with your divorce you may be able to get it where you don't have to pay for the divorce because they're not cheap so I would I would highly seek the attention of the YWC or the YMCA or my local police and the next time he put his hands on you girlfriend 911 is only three numbers, and it's an easy motherfucking number. And I'm sorry, but if you have got me in a state of mind where, okay, I like to wear makeup and I like to wear hair. However, I am not about to let nobody, man or female, tell me I don't like you wearing makeup and I don't like what you put on and I don't like you doing your hair. I'm not about to change my ways. If you don't like it, then nigga, you could get to step in. Goodbye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. I'm not about to change myself because you met me this way. And if you don't like it, then you know what? Then, oh, well, I guess you don't like me because I'm going to be like this. And this is how I'm going to wear my shit to this very day. I wish a nigga would tell me some shit like that. Like, oh, you need to stop wearing all that makeup. Or, oh, you need to stop wearing all that hair or some shit. I'd be like, oh, you need to stop running your mouth, okay? Because the door is right there. Let it hit you in your back two pockets on the fucking way out. Goodbye, Felicia. When... When you allow a man to start controlling you like that, you have lost all respect for yourself. And he has lost respect for you, too, by controlling. It it just doesn't work like that in the real world. You know what I'm saying? So now he wants you to look ugly and frumpy and not get dressed so nobody else will look at you. However, once you start looking like that, you think he's really going to look at you? He's going to be looking at some other bitches. Like, men are something else. Like, they are so good at brainwashing some women because some women are just so vulnerable and just don't know any better you know what i'm saying and it's just so sad that you know you go for it you fall for it i mean like i'm gonna wear makeup until the day i'm i'm dead in my casket and i'm gonna wear hair until then too and if my man ever tells me that he don't like my wigs or he don't like my hair there's a whole lot of shit that I could tell him that I don't like about him, too. And I'm pretty sure he would be like, oh, let me just shut the fuck up then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, let Monique, think, uh, let Monique know what you would do in that situation. Her situation is, like, not that hard of a situation. Like, you just get out the situation. You just get out the situation. So, we got nine minutes left. And I don't know, you guys, if I'm going to be able to get this done. Because this is a long. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Hi, April. I've been watching your Real Talk videos for years, and they are the best. Well, now it's finally my turn to email in. Names are already changed. My name is Rosa. I am married to my husband, Alex, for three years, and have a seven-year-old son from a previous relationship. My husband and I both suffer from depression. 
both being treated via medication. My husband also suffers from PTSD from some childhood experiences. The last year of our marriage has been especially difficult. However, the whole relationship has been challenging. We have had differences on how to parent my child. He believes I am not strict enough, and I feel that he comes off very passive-aggressive and ultra-strict. We have done marriage counseling briefly twice. It, com it always comes back to, well, give the changes a try, but things seem to go right back. My husband has been caught twice having inappropriate conversations and photo-sharing sessions with other women online. Due to his depression medication, he does, he does have some sexual performance issues that we have been trying to work on. Due to these issues, he thinks it's a good idea to slowly come off his depression medication because this is just adding to his depression. He currently goes to counseling and his therapist said he doesn't see an issue with winding off of it slowly with my counsel, with counseling. Unfortunately, I feel like he isn't as happy as he used to be either. However, he says he isn't going back and, go, and is... Was it? Unfortunately, I feel like he isn't as happy as he used to be either. However, he says he isn't going back and he is going to work through it without the meds. Ah, oh, what about the quality of his family's life, though? Is that selfish to say? On top of not having sex, having a sex life and dealing with various moods with adjusting medications, arguments around parenting are just an added issue. I do believe that at times my son needs to be disciplined. However, the way he goes about it, I feel is really mean. It seems to always be something. At this point, I feel like being my son's stepfather is annoying to him. We no longer have family fun time like we used to. There's no trying to plan family vacations or day activities. I find myself not sure if I'm being the exact parent I want to be or more doing damage control to keep the tension and quiet arguments quiet. It, it's hurtful to think about, how I, it's hurtful to think, but I feel like I don't like who he is without his full medication. I'm beginning to think I may not like his personality. I've always was so happy go lucky before getting married. Married. I've tried to be patient while working through the lack of sex, but really I'd be lying if I didn't say I'm concerned and I'm thinking about cheating a few times. I just don't know what to do. I'm sorry for being all over the place with this story, but you always seem to know just what to say. Let me know, girl. So, okay, Rosa been, Rosa's been married to her husband, Alex, for three years. She has a seven-year-old son from a previous relationship. Um, they both, her husband and her, Rosa and her husband both suffer from depression. He her, actually suffers from PTSD from a childhood experience. However, the husband, it seemed like his, his way of disciplining a child is really rough and can come across very mean. Also, he has a problem with getting hard because of the medication. So there's some sexual problems. He also has been caught exchanging photos and communication letters on social media with other women. Um, he wants to wean himself off of the medication because that's also depressing him because it's messing up their sexual life. However, she was always happy-go-lucky before she got married, and she doesn't feel that way anymore. She's also feeling a little bit, you know, frisky, and she wants to get it on, but with her husband, it's not going to happen, okay? But like I said, the main important thing in this, to me, the main important thing is how he handles her child. So they've only been married for three years. Okay, and she has a seven-year-old son. So they met when her son was four. Now, here's my thing. Um, yes, everybody, there's a lot of people out there that have children before marriage. It's, you know what I'm saying? That's common. However, there's a time and a place and a way to go about disciplining somebody else's child. You have to come across that as a very, very touchy subject. Because if you are going to chastise my child and I feel like you're being a really rough and tough and a little bit over the top, then I'm going to feel some type of way. However, that's the main thing to me because I'm not about to let anybody come in between my children and myself, regardless if it's my husband or not. If that's not their father, and even if it was their biological I'm not about to let you come in between my kids because my kids come first. So that's the main thing that you need to realize, Rosa. Your son comes first and how he feels. If he feels some type of way regarding your husband, the way he's treating him, and you're feeling like being his stepfather is becoming more or less a chore and it's becoming annoying to him, then maybe that's something that you need to look at because in the long run, your son is the one that's always going to be there for you. And he's going to be there for you regardless of what. This man come and goes. They come and go. It's not like a guarantee set in stone because you're married to him because look at me I was married for what I was with this person for 17 16 years and I was married for 12 of them 
These things come and go. A marriage certificate can come and go. A man can come and go. But your children are with you for a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? So fuck the sex shit. If, you be, if you're disrespecting my kid and I don't like the way you're chastising him or disciplining him, then nigga, you need to be fucking dealt with. I'm not saying deal with him like cut his fucking head off. But you need to have a real serious conversation with him. Because I'm not about to let you fucking chastise my kid and go overboard. And also, I'm not about to let you tell me that I'm not strict enough. Because regardless... Regardless of how strict you are to a child, if you're too strict, like how my mother was, you're going to do some sneaky shit because you're too strict. Now, I'm not saying be all loose with your kids. However, certain kids need certain discipline. And nobody said you got to torture these little motherfuckers. But give them respect the same time you're disciplining them. And it seems like he's not doing that. So if he cannot give them respect, then you need to have a serious talk with him. Now, as for the sexual part and your sexual life ain't that great... I'm not going to say cheat on him, but if you're not happy with him and you ain't happy with him physically, mentally, emotionally, sexually, you're just not happy with him, then maybe it's time that you go your separate ways, your separate paths. You know what I'm saying? Because like you said, you were already happy-go-lucky. And yeah, marriage is a sacred thing. Some people say, oh, it's to death to his part. No, motherfucker, it's not to death to his part anymore, okay? Because I might fucking kill your ass just to get the fuck out of this marriage. But seriously, it's not death to his part. But the sexual part, I'm not saying cheat on him because, listen, let me tell you something. You got two hands, five fingers on each fucking hand. Bitch, you better feel realize how to fucking make yourself feel good. Because there have been many months and years that I've had to go without some, but I got these. And these work sometimes better than the real fucking thing. And yes, I did say that on Real Talk because it's about being real. You know what I'm saying? I have a man. We were separated for six months because he was in New York. I got these motherfuckers. Sex is really not that important to me in my life where I got to go and cheat. However, if you're not happy with him all the way the fuck around, Rosa, then that says something for you. And maybe it's time that you pack up your shit and get to stepping and get to moving. Don't let somebody else's depression depress you even fucking more. Because life is way too short to be depressed by some motherfucking dick, okay? And dick ain't everything. However, if he has more other qualities that interest you, then that's fine. But if he doesn't, then it's time for you to see your way out the door. Bottom line. So on that note, I'm sorry that I had to cut this last one very short, but time is running out because my camera time memory is running out. So let Rosa know what you would do. Let all the ladies know what you would do. And as always, stay diva and divolicious. And I'll catch you ladies on my next video.